Hey there guys, if you don't know already, I'm Deadscale, and today I'm going to be bringing you a guide to the essential game mechanics in Dota 2, brought to you on behalf of Mobility Gaming. This will be a two part guide, and this first part will consist of runes and general creep concepts of the game. It's the start of the game, and a good start of the game is crucial if you want to get anywhere. If you've ever seen anyone play Dota, LOL, or any type of MOBA, you'll know that the game doesn't start when the creeps spawn, it starts as soon as you load in. And after you've talked strategy, picked your heroes and stuff, got your items, you'll be off on your way to your lane. And assuming that no shenanigans have happened, you should be ready to start. As you may already know, in Dota there are five runes, each of them giving their own specific effect. Blue is double damage, which only applies to your base damage if you didn't know. Red is haste, which gives you a movement speed buff and immunity to slows. Green is regeneration, which I'm pretty sure you can guess what this does. The dark purple one is invisibility, and using any ability or item will remove the effect, and the yellow one is illusion, giving you two illusions. If you happen to have a bottle, the room will fill up an empty one, and give you the rune effect as well as your three charges back. This is why a bottle is really good to pick up on roamers, or mid heroes. At zero minutes a rune spawns, and every two minutes after another rune spawns, if the other is used. Rune control is usually an important part of any mid lanes game. If you're a support, as soon as you spawn and have bought your items, you'll want to run to one of the rune spots. Depending on your lane, if you're top, you go to the top one, and vice versa. And wait for the zero minute rune. Try to stay safe as I'm doing in this video, as you really don't want to fight if you're alone. What you're waiting for here is the zero minute rune. As a support, you'll probably have a carry who's creep walking through you. So the zero minute rune is much more important. Right when that clock hits zero, check the rune spot. If there's a rune there, let your teammates know what it is, as a double damage could net you an early kill if your teammate decides to move on it. Ask quickly if anybody wants it, and if no one does, pick it up or destroy it and go to your lane. If the rune wasn't there, let your team know that it spawned at the other location. If you happen to buy a ward, that's if you didn't buy the courier, don't forget to ward the rune. There are a lot of ward spots in Dota 2, but most of the used ones actually have an eye in game, as a spot shown. You can see here as I'm showing in the game where all of these spots are, or most of them, and if you're near the warding, just put one of them there as it's generally a good spot. Hey, that's why it's there, isn't it? The creeps in Dota 2 play a big part in the game. They give you money, experience, help you push towers, even defend you in some cases. Their movements change how the game is played. If your lane's pushing while your enemies are trying to push into your base, they'll have to go back to defend or they could lose a tower. And there are a few basics you need to know with creeps, starting with creep walking. Creep walking, or creep blocking, is the act of walking in front of your creeps, either in zigzags or pressing stop slightly, to slow your creep wave down from reaching the lane. A successful creep walk can keep you much closer to your tower, and in turn keep you safer from ganks and the like. This is usually done in every lane, but the side lane solo, as the side lane needs to push the lane to actually get the lane to fall back, but I'll speak about that a little later on. Creep walking does take practice, as if one of the creeps does happen to get past you, you've basically failed it. If you're good, you can try and get the range creep to go first, as if the melee creeps kill your range creep first, your lane will always end up getting pushed. But first, just try to get the creep walking down. Next on the list of creeps, we have last hitting and denying. Now, I'm sure you know what last hitting and denying is, but for those who don't, last hitting and denying really go hand in hand. It's real self-explanatory. Just make sure you get the very last hit in the creep, and you get the gold. Or, in the case of denying, you deny a small bit of experience off the enemy, as well as stopping them getting the gold. Learning how to do this can be easy or hard depending on how well you are at timing things and how good you are at the game, but learning this mechanic is kind of vital in Dota 2, as if you can't last hit, you can't get gold as fast as you could with last hitting. And in terms, you'll be weaker overall. On a side note, everybody should try to deny, but certain roles take priority over different things. For example, a support should never try to last hit unless he knows the carry won't get the hit, and always should try to deny whenever possible. Whereas, a carry should kind of focus on getting as much last hits as possible, and deny whenever he's free. A little quick note on this as well, just make sure you're safe to last hit, as when you do it, you're putting yourself forward and in possible danger, and I personally have died just a few times for going for a last hit that was just slightly unsafe. If the enemy team has stuns or anybody is missing, do not risk it, it's not worth your life. Next on the list of creeps, we have creep aggro. You may have noticed while playing that whenever you try to attack the enemy in a lane with an auto attack, the enemy creeps will jump onto you faster than a girl eats chocolate. This usually leads to you taking a few hits, and in some cases losing more HP than you actually dealt damage to the other person. Creep aggro early game can be very, very dangerous, but also very useful, and you need to be careful to avoid it happening to you when you don't want it to. Using spells do not trigger creep aggro, and a little trick some range carry use 
those who have effects on attacks such as Drill Ranger, Slow, or Clinks, is Orb Walking. Just as a basic idea of what Orb Walking is, it's just to manually cast an Orb spell, like Drill's Frost Arrows, and as the projectile is in the air, you cancel the animation and continue walking. Doing this repeatedly can keep you in range of the enemy when they're running away. But more importantly, it does not trigger creep aggro. This is quite big. Imagine how much damage you could do with a ranged DPS without the creeps beating on your ass every time you do it. It's a good skill to learn, and if you frequently use ranged DPSs with orb effects, you should start practicing it. The one actual time you may want the creeps to aggro is in pulling the lane or reversing it, or if you have skills that depend on attacks to proc. If, for example, you pulled the creeps to the side of your lane, your melee carry will have an easier time last hitting it. Or if you pull the creeps to the woods to your tower, creep aggro will allow you to do that. A very good hero to help you understand all of these mechanics of how creep aggro can help you kill enemies is Axe. Having creeps attack you while you chase down an enemy can proc your counter helix, causing you to deal more damage. Play around with creep aggro until you finally get the hang of it, as it is a useful tool to have, but also a dangerous one. And last in our creep mechanic list we have creep pulling, stacking and lane balance. Creep pulling is the act of pulling neutrals into your lane, giving you gold, experience but more importantly denying gold and experience to the enemy. It's a very simple trick and can be done efficiently with a little bit of practice. The absolute easiest form of creep pulling I can show you is done on the radiant spot or the dire top lanes. If you look at the in game clock, if you look at the seconds part, around 14, 15 seconds and 45 seconds, attack the neutral creep camp closest to your lane and walk into it. The neutral creeps should end up hitting your creeps, they'll get into a fight and your creeps will follow them back to their camp. While they're fighting, do make sure to last hit or deny any of the creeps or neutrals so you don't miss out on the gold. This technique is usually used alongside with creep stacking. Creep stacking is a useful technique for junglers and supports, as it provides more golden experience in less time, for a slightly harder creep camp. Creeps spawn every minute in game time, but do not spawn if you have vision of the camp. Knowing this, if you pull the neutrals out at the right time, around 55 seconds, you'll be able to force another camp to spawn on top of it, thus stacking the two creep camps. Doing this before creep pulling can give you the most gold out of your creep camp, and even go as far as denying one whole wave to your enemies. Be careful whenever you creep pull, as the enemies can just as easy walk around and take the kills, or even try to kill you. The next section of this will move on to the more overlooked but useful thing called lane balance. Lane balance, the flow of the game, call it whatever you will, is a general concept that applies to all of the game. Every last hit, every deny, every creep camp you pull will move and change the position of your lane. A very easy example is is just pushing a lane. You push by simply auto-attacking the creeps. Doing this will make the enemy creeps die faster and move closer to the enemy tower, which in turn gets you to hit the tower. You might even get the kill in the tower, but this also means you're further away from yours and you can get ganked easily. This is one of the more basic examples of lane balance, and learning how to control this balance is the key to winning some of your lanes, or even the game. Lane balance can be done by something as simple as early denying creeps, which is when you start to hit the creeps when they reach half health. Doing this pulls them further towards your tower, and in result, pushes the enemy's lane. Or you can push. It can even be as complex as pushing a lane to later have it pushed towards you so you can farm. There are a lot of ways that this applies, and going over them all would take quite a while. But just a few general concepts you want to have in mind when thinking about this lane balance is how does it help me? For example, if you can't get close to the creep wave without taking hits or possibly even dying, do I have any way that I can push the lane with a spell? Doing this will put the creeps under the enemy tower faster, and in turn will push their lane back towards me without the enemy being able to do anything about it. I'll leave this one up to you, but experiment a little bit. Something as simple as pushing a lane slightly before you go into a team fight could end up saving your tower because the enemies have to go back to defend theirs, or even letting you a tower kill. I hope this guide was informative, and if you have any questions, please, as always, leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. The next part will be on the rest of the mechanics in Dota 2, like Fog of War for example. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, and subscribe if you already haven't. This is Deadscale from Mobility Gaming, signing out.